Today, Tuesday, March 27th at 1.30 p.m. at the Edith A. O'Leary Senior Center in beautiful North Reading, Massachusetts, we have the Seacoast Repertory Theater presenting Yes, There Is a Tomorrow. This is five brief plays written for, by, and about older adults. The play is designed to help senior citizens recognize the challenges of growing older. The focus is intended to show how to better deal with issues when elders open up to their peers and families. Gloria Mastro, Gloria Mastro, this was her idea, her concept. She's the Secretary of the Council on Aging, and we thank her and Mrs. Dodge for pulling this together. We have Michelle Monica attorney who will be helping us later in the year if you have some legal questions. She's going to have a little program going. She's our vice chair of our council. I apologize you haven't seen me as much as you should here, but I'm employed and working. Um, we do meet here on the evenings and have meetings. Um, so without any further ado, I would like to turn it over to the Seacoast Repertory and also introduce Wendy Zimmonsmith, and she is from the Commonwealth, and she's going to uh, interject some thoughts from the perspective of mental health, and I'm here to listen to her because I'm holding on by a thread, Wendy. Thank you very much, Mrs. Dodge. It's Joanne. Joanne. Hi, it's good to be here. I don't want to stand in front of anyone because I've never done this before, and someone suggested I do it as introduce everyone. So you all introduce each to each other, okay? No. <laughs> this is I'm Millie Guth. I'm Claire. Yeah. I'm Barbara. I'm Ken. I'm Lorraine. Uh, <laughs> Washable. <laughs> Bob. That's Bob. <laughs> We're pleased to be here today. Um, we've been doing this particular play, which we titled There Is a Tomorrow. Uh, it was. Uh, funded by some grants that were received by Senior Moments and from a program in New Hampshire that's connected with all of the community mental health centers. And we realized that uh, depression and suicide are both pretty serious uh, problems, topics, what are incidents in seniors' lives today. And we just want to, this is a light presentation. Wendy will help lead a discussion and just talk about uh, things that we all ought to be a little aware of. And we're going to start it right off with our first skit. Find my paper here. Um, this is called April Showers. And April Showers are coming. It's a mixed blessing. We all know that spring is also coming, perhaps. These long, gray, dreary days can sure get to us. Let's drop in on Anna, Betty, and Doris, who are sitting in front of a picture window at the Spring Valley Nursing Home. A cold, hard rain has been falling steadily for a week. Carol comes rushing into the room. Hey, hey, come on, guys. Uh, they're starting a bingo game in the dining room in a few minutes. It will be fun. Oh, come on. It's better than sitting here staring at the rain. Bingo, how exciting. That's it. I've had it. I'm out of here. I've had just about enough of this place. I ain't dead yet, but I sure will be if I stay around here much longer. And where do you think you're going? Yeah. <laughs> I you have. don't even have a car. You don't even have any, any money. <laughs> yeah, but I have it all figured out. The next time the van heads out to Foxwoods, <laughs> I'm going to hijack it. <laughs> oh, sure you are. Come on, how do you propose to hijack the bus? I'll hit the driver over the head with my cane, oh. pull him out of the seat, and get behind the wheel. Oh, Lord, help us all. <laughs> you know, maybe that's not such a bad idea. <laughs> you know, there are days when I want to get out of here. Every time we try to do something, Nurse Wretched starts the hall with their tray of pills. Must keep everyone under yeah. control. Oh, now, yeah. come on. You mustn't be so hard on her. She's doing her best. Oh, if that sun doesn't shine pretty soon, she's going to be running after me. Oh, yeah. Well, aren't you the fun group? What would it take to get the three of you to leave this window 
and stop being gloomy. Why don't you try shutting off that rain, Miss Sunshine? All right, those are April showers. They bring May flowers, you know. Yeah. Come on, in the dining room Aww. and forget the rain. Have some fun. Maybe you'll win at bingo. Oh, not today. This oh. weather is just so gloomy. I don't even think I care if my numbers got called. Oh, dear. Yeah. Hey, you see those two kids on their bicycles over there? They're riding right in the water just so they can make waves. <laughs> I used to do that on my bike. Well, yeah. yeah, I used to do it on my car. <laughs> I love to come close to the curb and make big waves that would wash all over the sidewalk. <laughs> oh, so it was you. <laughs> I used to wait for the bus near my house and every time it rained, some creep would hit a puddle and shower me. Now I know who I can blame. <laughs> hey, look, look, there goes another car hitting the puddles hard. I'll bet there are kids in the car screaming, make a wave, Daddy, make a wave. Yeah. yeah. My kids always tried to get me to make waves, and I loved every minute of it. But, you know, it's fun being an overgrown kid. I think it's time we got out of this, <coughs> excuse me, rut of sitting around and doing nothing. I want to splash in some of those puddles yeah. with my cane. I'll sit closer to the edge and stretch my cane off the porch. It'll reach a puddle or two. Yeah. Try it. You know, we do need to get out of this rut. Yes. After lunch, let's go out onto the porch, even if it is raining. The roof will keep us dry, and we can be outside in the fresh air. I love the feel of early spring. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll go outside, but I don't know how much fun I'll have. Pretty chilly out there. It's damp out there. Now, oh, Betty, stop being so gloomy. Oh, We're going to act like overgrown kids. Come on, Betty. We'll bring that bag of pretzels from the party table. Yeah, I'm going to toss some for the squirrels to eat. Okay. I'll bet we can attract a few birds, too. Yeah. Well, I warn you. I'm going to sit next to a big puddle and splash you with my cane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you guys remember Thelma? She wanted to get out of here so badly, but she didn't have a cent. Oh. So she decided to become a prostitute. <laughs> yeah, and charge for her services. Every night she tiptoed down to the men's ward and come back later with a little smile oh. on her face. Goodness. I can't believe she really did that. Are you serious? How many times did she do that? Well, I lost count, but it all ended very suddenly. Oh, really? oh, wow. Yes. Hey, tell us. Well, the last night she was here, she made her nightly trip down the hall, but this time she didn't come back with a smile on her face. Oh. She raced into the bedroom and jumped under the covers. Oh, Suddenly, we heard over the loudspeaker, Cold blue! Cold blue! <laughs> Where is she now? Her family had to come and get her. Their car was driving away, just as the hearse pulled oh in. But they say he died with a smile on his face. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You're just kidding, right? That didn't really happen. <laughs> Oh, but the good story, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Would well, sure be a lot more exciting than Nurse Wretched evening rounds with her tray pills. Mm -hmm. You know, I've lost count of how many of those pills I take. Mm -hmm. I just open my mouth and she pours them in. Yeah. I think they ought to find some that would sweeten you up a bit. <laughs> well, we can't forget that some of those pills are a lifesaver. I suppose. I know I didn't want to take anything, though thought I could handle my life, but my life started to handle me. I didn't go out of the house. I didn't talk to my friends when they called. I thought I didn't need any help, at least that's what I kept telling myself. Well, I think we all do that. You know, it's just, it's not just the pills. What about the food in this place? Oh. You know, that dietitian is going to kill us with all that health food. Oh. <laughs> what I wouldn't give for a rare steak 
with mashed potato oh. and a salad dre with oh. drenched with blue cream. Oh. 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 <laughs> but you know, she does try with all the special diets we have in this place. It's a wonder anyone gets fed. Oh, okay, who wants a piece of chocolate? But Anna, you shouldn't be oh. eating candy. Oh, so what? And neither should you, Betty and Doris. It will raise your blood sugar and your blood pressure and upset your stomach and <laughs> irritate your arthritis oh. and cause constipation. <laughs> oh my gosh, well that takes care of my appetite. <laughs> Speaking of sweets, you are beginning to irritate me, Carol. Why are you always so sunshiny? Yeah. Well, I just like to look at the bright side oh, of life. Oh, oh, my glass is always half full. A little rain makes oh, the flowers grow. I always tell myself there are others who are worse off than me. Can I get her? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> oh, come on. I heard there'll be entertainment this afternoon. Someone will be coming in to sing to us. Oh, but that could be worse than the pills and the food. Oh, I'm out of here. No, no, let's just hang around. It should be good for a few laughs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If the sun comes out tomorrow, we can hijack the bus then. <laughs> All right. Okay, count me in. <laughs> but this afternoon, let's just sit on this porch and watch the rain. The robins are out on the lawn, and maybe we'll even see a rainbow. I'm going to take this cane and wrap it around her neck. Yes! yes. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to just open it up. Um, I think these uh, women and gentlemen are wonderful, and um, this is just one of several uh, plays that you going to see uh, this afternoon and I, a lot of the themes resonate throughout the play, uh, throughout the place and one of the things that, that <coughs> struck me is, you know, reminiscence and that that's a very important and helpful thing for people to do. I mean, it's, it's very uh, natural to experience various losses in your life. Um, you know, we talked about food and independence and having people uh, sort of dictate certain things that you're going to do um, and that that's a very difficult thing to to adjust to. Um, they also talk about sexuality and sometimes um, with older people, um, younger people have a misconception about that, that that's not something that uh, people are interested in as they get older. Um, so I'd like to see if there are any feelings, people who have any reactions to what I said, or the group uh, presented. Okay. The question we ask, what can I do? What do I want to do? Do you ever ask yourself that question? Well, let's look in on someone who's decided she's perfectly happy just sitting and watching TV all day long. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a program, so you'll have to hit me over the head when it's my turn. You aren't going to spend another day just sitting in that chair, are you? Who's that? Who's talking to me? <laughs> it's your conscience, woman. Oh, come on, come on. Is this some sort of a joke? I dozed off for a few minutes and I've had a bad dream. Hey, wait a minute there. No, I'm not a joke or a bad dream. I'm with you all the time. And I'm getting sick of you spending every day sitting in that chair, watching TV, or taking a nap. I'm retired now. I can do anything I want to do. And what's more, I don't have to do anything at all if I don't want to. And that's the problem. What's the problem? You don't do anything at all. What's so bad about that? 
Well, you could be spending your time doing much more important things. <laughs> like what? Well, like thinking about someone else. And how would I go about doing that? Well, maybe volunteering to help someone. You know, I'm not going to listen to you anymore. It's just my indigestion kicking up. La di do, la di do, la di da. I'm still here. Just leave me alone, will you? Why are you doing this to me? Because I care about you, girl. And I don't want to see you spending all your time just sitting in that chair. That is one sure way to feel old before your time. Besides, you have so many talents. Oh, yeah. You need something that will stimulate your brain. The world needs you. Sure. And what part of the world would that be? My kids have all moved away. They don't need me anymore. What could I possibly do for anybody else? Well, I see you have a book. Yeah, so what? Well, you could read to someone who can't see. Now, you know, I don't want to do that for some stranger. No, not me. Besides, I don't read too well. Well, how about playing cards with someone who was housebound? Look, I've worked hard all my life. I'm tired. I don't want to go out and talk to people I don't know. Just leave me alone, will you? Uh, you still have that big old car uh, sitting in the garage, don't you? You're asking an awful lot of questions. <laughs> well, do you? Yes. Well, then you could take someone for a ride. There are lots of people who can't get out of their homes. They would love a ride to the beach, or to get an ice cream cone, or to see the foliage. I don't think I'd be any good at that. Besides, I don't go for rides anymore. Not with the price of gas the way it is now. Oh, you're starting to worry me. You don't go out. You don't talk to anybody. You don't get dressed. You're not eating well. And you're awake half the night, I know. Don't suppose there's a, a little bit of depression creeping in, do you? I'm not depressed. I just don't care anymore. Uh, woman, <laughs> you are trying my patience. Good. And go away. No, I'm not going to let you off the hook. Oh, if you got out just once in a while and did something for somebody, you'd feel really good, I promise. I feel really good now. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you ever think of helping out in a nursing home? Oh, <laughs> they're full of old people. <laughs> Uh, 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 and just what do you think you are? Okay, let's look at other options. How about the library? You could stack books. You could even work on the polls on election day. Uh, do you vote? No. I don't like to encourage them. <laughs> oh, you are so frustrating. Then why don't you find somebody else to bother? Because I'm stuck with you. I'm your conscience, not someone else's. And I'm not giving up. I'm going to stay right here with you all night, if necessary, until you decide to do something. What can I do to make you go away? How about I'm, I need a nap. Oh, yeah, right. How about making a few phone calls? Okay. <coughs> I'll do it tomorrow. Now, now go away. Good try. How about making a few phone calls right now? Then I'll go away. I don't even know who to call. Well, I just happen to have written down a few phone numbers. You'll find them on the table by the phone. And remember, I'm always watching. This is the last time I have salami and bologna for lunch. <laughs> I'm waiting. Oh, all right. 
I'll do it now. Yes! <laughs> Uh, I think this is a terrific example of somebody that um, when some people retire, they feel like um, they don't have any sense of themselves and what they can do. And they're very isolated. Their um, family may have moved away. Um, and they basically um, can, can find things, as, as you all know, uh, to do to um, become involved in life again to help other people and to feel engaged in, in everyday activities. Any comments? Or, yes, hi. You know, when people say you, if you reach out and help someone that it makes you feel better, you know, you may not realize the impact of what it is to do for someone that needs something and it just comes flying back in your face and and people need to experience that because there are like children, there are, like you said, housebound people who just having a half an hour conversation with someone who's out in the world would mean the most to them. And then it comes right back at you and it's wonderful. So don't, don't diminish that volunteer kind of um, aspect. That's right. And the life experiences that the individual has had is very important and that's something very much to to share and to give uh, to other people in the community. Also, you notice that um, I picked up is the negativity because of the isolation and the denial. That's right. That the person is denying that they were depressed when she mentioned depression. It showed right in the thing that, and I think that's a good example because a lot of people who are isolative and don't have it also don't want to acknowledge the fact that they are in a situation that they need to work on. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. And also they, they don't have a purpose to live. And you have to remember that you've lived your life and you've done, you've had different roles in your lifetime. And uh, sometimes when you retire you just don't feel that you have a purpose left in life. That's right. So you sit and watch TV and that's, that's not, but if you do like Michelle said, extend yourself even by making a phone call, you know, it just helps you get out of that, break that isolation. I don't know if cast members are allowed to speak, but one experience that I had was when I finished, when we finished our skit, this lady came up to me sobbing, hugged me, thank you, thank you. She said, you've taught me so much, I am not going to sit here and die, I'm going to start living again. Mm -hmm. and that makes it worth it, but it, the message got to her, which is what we're trying to do. It helps them ask the question, how do I really invest in my life? What can I do to help me find a purpose? Yeah. But you people are living examples of doing something in your life to help others, and uh, you probably have a lot of fun doing this and traveling around and everything. That's great. So we thank you for that, um, uh, being models of what we can all do. Thank you. Because you're all young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my goddaughter met Nancy Goddard there once. I said, I'm helping out some older people. And she looked at me, she goes, Nancy Goddard's not old. Which shows that the child understood the real spirit is what's old or young. Because you guys aren't old. Well, let's go down with the age thing, Bob. How old are you? Uh, in July, I'll be 86. Oh, my goodness. I'm 72. I'm 22 for the third time. <laughs> I'm 87. <laughs> I'm 81. And I'm 69. And we're all still kicking. Yeah. And complaining. And our oldest, our oldest anyway. actress is 92. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Who brought age up anyway? Yeah. <laughs> her, her we don't think about that. Though. Now the next question is, the ones that told their real age. Yeah. <laughs> our next don't kid hit is, me. Our next kid is called, I'm Never Getting Out of Bed Again. And this is Dodie and Anne stopped by to visit their friend Sue in her room. They're going shopping, and they want to see if Sue is ready to come along. 
let's take a look at how some very good friends try to help. getting out of bed again. But today's shopping day and the bus is waiting. Who cares? We do. Anne is with me. Good. Go with her. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Sue. Don't talk like that. We're going to go to the malls and wind up at Burger King. Burger King for an all-fat lunch. <laughs> you always love to do that. Hi, Sue, it's Ann. We'd love you to come. And that new guy, Tom, across the hall is coming. He thinks you're cute. Well, not today I'm not. I'd much rather just stay here with my trusty remote. You two go catch the bus. I then can. I can be alone and not worry about making anybody happy. I'm tired about caring about people. Nobody cares back. We wouldn't be standing here yelling through this stupid door if we didn't care. Nobody asked you to. Just go. I'll be just fine. All right, Sue, we're leaving. Good. But we have not given up. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, Rita. <laughs> My turn. Fire. <laughs> okay, Dodie and Anne are worried, and this isn't like Sue. They have a number of concerns, so they decide to stop by the doctor's office and have a talk about this. Today. Well, we're awful worried about Sue, Doctor. How's she doing? Can you tell me a little bit more about her? Well, you know, for one thing, she never seems to want to leave her room, other than for meals. Yeah, and last night at dinner, she would barely talk to us. Right. We had to drag conversation out of her, and boy, that's not like no, Sue. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Has anything happened to her recently that would trigger such a behavior? Well, you know, she lost her husband a year, no, it was almost two years, wasn't it? Yeah. She doesn't talk a lot about her kids anymore because Jack and his wife and the grandkids moved to the West Coast. Yeah. Oh, and there's another thing, Doctor. When she does talk, she's slurring her words, uh, and uh, that's not like her. Mm. That could be a medical condition. Do you know if she's been to any other doctor? I don't think so. The slurring bothered me so much that I started snooping around. I know I shouldn't do that, but I had to know. What I found was her trash barrel filled up with empty wine bottles. <laughs> Sounds to me like I should set up an appointment with Sue. Thank you, ladies. You've been very good friends to bring this to my attention. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Yeah, Tom lives across the hall from Sue. He noticed that she didn't go with her friends, so decides he maybe he can get her attention. <laughs> hey! <laughs> What's all the noise out there? 
I said, what's all the noise? Oh, are you talking to me? Well, yes, I am. I'm trying to sleep in here. Gosh. Do you only yell through doors? I heard you yesterday with this, with your two friends. How about opening up and being civilized? For the likes of you? Leave me alone. How do you ever know what I'm like? You've only heard me. Open the door and you'll see what a handsome devil I am. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you mean you'd miss a chance like this? I could be the second coming of Gregory Peck. <laughs> and you'd never know. What will it take to make you go away? Very simple. Open the door. Oh, all right, if only to get rid of you. Uh, oh, <laughs> hello. Hello yourself. What do you think? Well, you are nicer looking than I expected. Told you. And if I say so myself, I wasn't expecting very much from someone who locks herself away all day. Want to talk? No. Nothing's changed. Now that I've seen you, you can go away. <laughs> if you think that will work, you've got another thing coming. A few days go by and Dr. Dudley sends a message that he would like to see Sue. She grudgingly gets out of bed and heads for his office. <sighs> oh. Good morning, Sue. Thanks for dropping in. It wasn't my idea. I'd rather be in bed. Well, I've heard that's where you've been spending a lot of time lately. Aren't you feeling well? Well, you can say that again. Nothing seems to be like it was. Hmm. Can you tell me some symptoms? Maybe there's a medication that I can give you that would make you feel better. Are you running a fever? No, nothing like that. My body feels okay. I just don't have any energy to get up and go anywhere. Well, Sue, that's not like you. I know. You were always the one leading the way around here. I know. Dodie and Ann came to my room the other day. They wanted to go shopping, and I sent them away. I used to love to go shopping. Sue, can you tell me what's going on in your personal life? I know you lost your husband a year or so, I think, and that must have been devastating to you. Has anything else happened? Well, I seem to be handling Bob's loss okay, but when my son Jack told me he had a job transfer over to the West Coast, oh, I miss him so, and the grandkids. I so want them to be around. They brightened my day so much. Sounds like you've been dealing with more than your share of heartache. Sue, I'm going to ask you a tough question. What have you been doing to cope with this loneliness? Well, nothing really. Sue, be honest with me. 
Have you been using alcohol or something else to get by? Well, maybe a glass of wine every now and then. Not too much, you understand. You know there are better ways to seek help. For one thing, you can see a counselor and talk things through. Then there are medications that can ease oh. the burden. Oh, come on, Doc. Take a pill to feel better? Oh, I can't believe that would work. Well, believe it. I can prescribe something for you right now that will relieve the anxiety of loneliness and get you on the path back to norm. Really? You, you mean I might actually want to go shopping again? Yes, and maybe be get you back to doing the other things you used to do and know Sue for. Okay, Doc. Let's give it a shot. <clears throat> Sue, Jody, and Tom and Ian are all sitting on the bus together. Hey, once we get to the mall, I'm going to make a beeline for that new gift store. Uh, they have a sale on all the Hallmark stuff. Now that's the Sue we all used I to know. know. I know it. Isn't Emma? What's gotten into you, girlfriend? Is this the new friend sitting next to you? <laughs> well, Tom has certainly helped. <laughs> <laughs> but I also had a long talk with Dr. Dudley, and he prescribed some meds for me. They seem to calm my anxieties, and they help me to see there are better things than just hanging around your apartment all day. Yeah, she's something, isn't she? When I moved in a couple of months ago, I saw this pretty, velocious gal in the cafeteria and decided I wanted to meet her. Then, all of a sudden, she looked like she was in a funk. And she kind of disappeared from the world. See, see, Looks yeah. like she's back! Yep, I'm back! I got a new cell phone with tons of free minutes, and now I talk to Jack and Molly and the grandkids every day. Well, it's sure good to have the old Sue back with us again. Dodie and Ann, I can't thank you enough just for sticking with me, banging on my door to get me out of there. It's a wonder the neighbors didn't call the cops. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you're just as bad. Hey, you know what? You do look a lot like Gregory Peck. <laughs> you know, I'm really glad we went to the doctor. We have our friend back. Would anybody like to talk about some of the things that they heard in that place? I hate to always be the one that has the comments, but I just want to... You're an attorney. I know, I, ha I have to talk at how I make my living. There's a stigma about taking medications for anxiety or depression, and people tend to shy away from that or think that you're saying that they're crazy. Uh, but they, people have to realize that if there's a, a genuine uh, brain imbalance, that medicine will help that. And that stress and anxiety and loneliness can cause these actual physiological changes in your brain. So if you have diabetes, you take medicine. If you have depression or anxiety, you take medicine. And there's nothing, um, there's nothing negative about that. In fact, it's quite positive. Thank you. That's a very good point. Uh, any other comments or reactions? I think sometimes it's just, it can be a short term. It's not something that you would have to take for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes taking medication just gets you over that hump and uh, 
over the tough time and things get better and if you get off the medication and love, you know, life will, will get better. It's just, uh, it will help for a while if you need it. It doesn't have to be long term. And I think a lot of people don't know that. I think they think if there's a long term medication and it doesn't have to be. Right. And I, I think that that's also a very good point. And uh, if you think about the vignette, we had Sue who had uh, experienced the loss of her husband a little less than two years ago and she reported to the doctor that she had made an adequate adjustment but then when she had the next loss of her son moving away with his family that that sort of tipped her over the edge. Um, she also started to use um, alcohol which was exacerbating the depressive symptoms um, and the depression was pretty classic in terms of her, you know, isolating herself, withdrawing, and uh, sleeping all the time, and losing interest in her various activities. Um, and uh, like I said, um, you know, her friends stuck with her and were able to um, help try and get her back out of the depression. Any other thoughts or comments? Finding someone to talk with and laugh with and share your concerns with is so very important in our lives. Betty, who lives with her daughter on the other side of town, uh, has stopped by for a visit with her friend Alice. Meanwhile, Jeff and Charlie are sitting on a park bench where they meet every morning. <coughs> doing some shopping and she dropped me off. Oh, I do so treasure these visits. Uh, no. They're never as often or as long as I'd yeah. like. I feel so lonely being here all by myself. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, there are neighbors, but it's just not the same. I know. I can't drive and I can't get anywhere without a ride from my daughter. She said she'd be back in one hour to pick me up. Oh, our kids are just so busy today. I know. You know, Mary can't do anything without checking her calendar. No one asks me to do anything anymore. Or ask me anything, and I have a lot of answers. <laughs> yes, but not always for the questions people ask. <laughs> My dad and my grandfather were so smart. How smart were they? <laughs> okay, wise guy. I was always I would always ask them for help when I got stuck on something. And they always knew what to do. Then they taught me how to do it. We never had a day full of appointments when we were young. Remember those days when we would shop <laughs> all day long? Yeah. Yeah. You know, as soon as the kids left for school, we'd be in the car and on the road. And sometimes we'd take the train into Boston. We'd rush into Filene's basement, and we'd join the crowd waiting for them to open the doors. Oh, I'll never forget the fight that you got into with that woman who tried to take the sweater away from you. You were fierce. Uh, well, I didn't care what she said. I picked it up first. My dad could fix anything. Electrical and he taught me to. But my son just calls someone in to come in and fix it. Figures I don't know anything about that stuff. I gave up trying to help and now I just sit in my chair and keep quiet. If I do try to repair something, my son and daughter tell me, you don't need to bother with that things anymore, Dad. It's your turn to rest and enjoy life. <laughs> so here we are, sitting and enjoying. And you know, we'd shop all day. We never got tired. No. Never. No. And we'd go to Woolworth's counter for lunch. <laughs> yep. Oh boy, a grilled cheese sandwich, a cup of coffee, and then a hot fudge sundae. <laughs> oh, how I miss those days. I could fix any car on the road. Have you looked under the hood of these cars today? I can't find anything I recognize under there. Yeah, isn't that the truth? 
They say they're running by computers today. Don't get me started on those things. My son bought me a computer and told me it would help me pass the time. Gave me something to do to get me started and away he went. <laughs> now, about the only thing I can do is get it started. <laughs> After that, they keep sending screens that want something I don't know how to give them. I can't spend every day calling someone for help, so the damn thing just sits there and collects dust. Can you still drive? I never see you around a car. Nah, they sold my car. Told me I shouldn't be out there with my eyes failing. Hell, I could still see the white line. <laughs> it was all over for me when they took my driver's license away. Betty, I have to ask you, do you sometimes feel really sad? I mean, I find myself thinking back on those days, <clears throat> and I feel such a pain right here. You know, I do the same. And when I hear children outside the house, I close my eyes and I see my own when they were that age. Sometimes I cry. I do too. And then I feel like such an old fool. When the stripers were running, I'd get my gear and head for the beach. Get one of those on your hook and you got a job on your hands. Now I can't get anyone to drive me there. I used to know this old guy who was stuck in the house all the time. He says, you're so lucky you have your car, but you can come and go as you please. I never really understood what he meant. <clears throat> well, I'd leave work sometimes and stop by the Legion Hall, have a beer with the guys. We'd talk about war, politics, or sports. Not anymore. You know, my dear, when we were younger, we never told anyone how we felt. When I was really low or even sick, I'd smile and say, I'm fine. But I always had you. Speaking of, speaking of feeling low, postpartum blues is what they call it today. But back then it was frightening. Pull yourself together, girl, everyone would say. What have you got to feel depressed about? You've just had a beautiful baby girl. I would feel so guilty. You know, we were never supposed to feel down, and we certainly weren't supposed to talk about it. If it weren't for you, I would have thought I was the only one who ever felt that way. Heaven forfend, it was always put on happy days. <laughs> Sometimes that was hard to do. Well, I couldn't have made it without you. I know we can talk to each other over the phone, but it's not the same. I miss those times when we sat together, drinking tea and helping each other through the bad times in our lives. Oh, we're getting all together too depressed yeah. here. Yeah, we are, we are. Well now, do you remember this time? Janet told everyone you dyed your hair. Oh, you were so mad at her. And you told her to mind her own business and she wouldn't speak to you for a month. Right, and a month <laughs> wasn't long enough. <laughs> hey, Jeff, how are things at home? Is the missus still having that problem with her back? Yeah. She has good days and bad days. She's off her feet today. So I have to remember to get some tea and other stuff at the store before I go home. How about you? Is living alone getting easier? I'm not so sure I'll ever get used to it. Since my wife passed, the days seem okay, but the nights are pretty lonely. Well, I remember. I'm always here if you want to talk to someone you have my phone number don't you yeah uh, jeff can i ask you a serious question anytime did you ever think about 
ending it all. There's the loneliness and the old body hurting in places it never did before and still does the next day. And they take all kinds of pills to keep me going. And there aren't a hell of a lot of things to do anymore. Have you talked to anyone about this? I'm talking to you, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not what I mean. Have you talked to anyone who knows about who you should talk to? Come on, Jeff. I didn't want to go to one of those shrink people. They don't know me. You do. And we talk about so many things. Can't this just be another one of them? So answer me. Have you ever thought about ending it all? Well, to be honest, no. <coughs> In spite of all things we bitch about, I'd rather be sitting on the bench bitching than the alternate. Hell, I want to be around long enough to see if they catch the bunch of crooks who are messing up the country today. Well, you know, Jeff, that makes a certain amount of sense. Guess I'll put those thoughts on the back burner. You know, it's good to have people to talk to. Remember the old days? People never talked about their problems. Don't ask. Don't show your dirty laundry they preach. So we all went around with smiles on our faces. And our kids expect us to do that today. What have you got to feel sorry for yourself about? We give you a good home, so we smile and go about our business. Hey, buddy, we're getting kind of glum here. How about those red socks? Now I'm really depressed. <laughs> Guess we shouldn't complain. Our kids love us, even though they don't understand us. And we have, when we do have a good home, and we get good meals. I'll never forget the time you bought that blue dress to wear to the Elks Hall dance. Janet showed up in the same dress. She took one look at you and left. <laughs> I think it took her two months to speak to me that time. I don't cook anymore. It's no fun to cook for one. Meals on wheels, canned soup and toast. That's it. You know, if you and I lived in the same building, we could cook for each other. And we could have tea and play cribbage and talk for hours. Oh, yes, we could. <laughs> well, it's about time I head home. The wife would be looking for me. Sometimes I swear she treats me like a kid. She's afraid I'll lose my way home. Well, okay, buddy. See you tomorrow. Same time, same place. And don't forget to take a left on Main Street this time. <laughs> and don't forget to pick up the tea. Ding dong! Oh, 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 that's my daughter. She told me to come right down when she rang the bell. She has a meeting at three. And you, you know, she's very good to me, but yeah. I don't like to keep her waiting. I know, I don't blame <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll call ones. you tomorrow. All right, my dear, thank you. I'm getting depressed. <laughs> you know, I re I'm really starting to feel, you know, I'm not quite in that category yet, but I'm really starting to feel that if all you have to do is think of the past things and what you could, what you used to do and what, you know, you were important for, then uh, it leaves you with a lot to really actually feel sad about. And, you uh, know, I can see where, where it really is a difficult thing. But, you know, in every vignette, in everybody's life, there is something that you can do. There is some purpose. The memories are wonderful, obviously, and the 
good friends seem to be the best antidote for all this, but it's a frightening thing to be in, in a category where you feel like nobody needs you or wants you. It's made me think about the elderly people in my life and how maybe I can ask them to do things for me, and they probably would love to do that. And to feel it's a different society today. Uh, right. They talked about not talking about postpartum depression and experiencing those feelings and, and the stigma of seeking some sort of help. Um, the the uh, theme is suicide, and, and it's something that's very serious. And um, his friend was right in terms of suggesting that he seek some counseling, and that's something that you do need to pay attention to. Um, there are a lot of a lot of losses, but it's you know. Uh, the volunteerism uh, segment and some of the others, there are things that you can do. And, um, yes, uh, you have earned your right to sort of sit back and take the remote or just relax, but that doesn't mean that you just stop living totally. I saw some other people reacting to some things uh, about the, seeing the white line in the, uh, in the road and then uh, some comments, somebody was struggling about the computer. I mean, again, uh, any reactions to that? Come on, say something. <laughs> She's lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> there seems to be quite a bit of uh, a difference in ages here. We, we get uh, early 70s, mid, uh, early 80s, and and upper 80s, and, and, and if you look around uh, at, uh, you know, different people, now retirement used to be retired and then, then you died. That's about what it was. But now you've got, <laughs> yeah, you've got people that live a lot, they're living a lot longer, and there are several categories of people. I, uh, I work in a little convenience store. I'm retired, and I had needed something to do, so I work in a little convenience store. And I see people that come in. There's a lady that comes in. She's 90 years old. She still drives. When I see her pull up, I have cringe because she parks <laughs> right where I'm standing. Uh, she smokes two packs of cigarettes a day. She, she buys lottery tickets, and people give her a bad time. She says, what the hell? It's my, uh, that's what I do. You know, it's my business. I'll do what I want to do. Uh, but, you know, and, and I look back at, you know, my grandparents. There's a big difference between my grandfather and then my father. And then my, my age, you know, it, it seems like that the... Uh, the generations there, uh, you, you seem to have more to do younger. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? It, it's, uh, there seems to be like three stages. There's the stage of the people who are recently retired that still have the energy and the strength to do things. Then there are people who are kind of sitting around. And then, then you go to the nursing home and, and you see the people who, uh, you know, a lot of them have absolutely nothing to live for because their, their minds are gone, physically they're gone. And, they're just sitting around waiting to die. So, I don't know. It, it, I think this is a this is a good good thing to talk about it, you know, and talk about what you can do. And uh, I have a friend who uh, who's he's 80, almost 80, and he teaches computers uh -huh. to seniors uh, down at, in, in Newton at the uh, senior center. Uh, you know, fill here with this computer. I mean, it's it's tough. I, mean, I work with a computer, so I have one, and I enjoy using it. And it's it's good entertainment for people who who haven't had it, uh, this is why things like this are really nice, because it's a place you can go and you can, you know, you can learn and you can do and you can be around, uh, around other people that are your age or uh, a couple of years older or whatever, you know. We only owe active people. Yeah, yeah, we only owe active, no active people. Yeah. And we're a hundred. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> we still get along. <laughs> no, huh? I thought she said we were a hundred. Nah, she's, she's exaggerating. We know old people and we just do everything. You, you have to have a goal in life, and I was telling them coming down, my goal in life is to be, live to be a hundred and get shot by a jealous husband. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> my, father, my father said he wanted, to be, he wanted to die like the godfather. He wanted to, somebody to find him out in the garden working there. Well, he almost made it. He, you know, <laughs> he died suddenly when he was 90 years old. And, but you know, he was still he was still active. He was out running around the day before. I, say, I, I think my goal uh, is to be you know, to to remain active and doing something, That's and to it. die all of a sudden. That's what I want to do. I, I don't want to die slowly. You know. Mention with one of our skits for the man 115 years old getting married next week. Mm -hmm. Why would a 115 year old man want to get married? That's Did I say he wanted to get married? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I'd like to speak to this lovely young lady because whatever you said, I understand, and I think two things you have choices. And I have a friend, actually, she and I both grew up in Winchester, which is not far from here, and we've both been Mainas for a long time. But um, she lost her husband, and she can't talk about anything else. What she does is play games on computer all day and hit the bars at 5 o'clock at night. And it's pitiful. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she's done, and I won't keep you on this, but she's been going to the same doctor for 20 years. She had to call up and ask how to get there recently. Mm -hmm. However, what I have done is talk, talk, talk about this stuff. And Will you take me in and introduce me? No, this is something you have to decide. And I have given her a lot of written material, and my halo is shining because she has now actually got into two things. And one is a day's um, every Wednesday at the local library. She volunteers, and she's in another group now, which is a blessing because she's finally, I mean, it's choice. She has a choice to sit there and get drunk or die or whatever. Or do something. She's beginning to do something. But don't forget, there's always something you can do. Well, I, I, thank you for that. And I, I know that we're running out of time, but I, I just want to say that you brought up an important point talking about um, depression and grief. And uh, it sounds like this woman has had an extended grief reaction that um, should be treated. I mean, it's normal to have a, a grieving period, but if it's going on for that extended period of time and she's self-medicating with, with alcohol, that, as we said before, is, is a very uh, dangerous combination. Uh, you talked about her memory loss, and it could be due to a metabolic uh, disorder, either the alcohol consumption or some other medical condition, yeah. not necessarily, you know, uh, something that's permanent. So thank you for that. Now, I'd like to say something to you, and you can throw me out afterwards, because <laughs> I'm going to quote the Bible, and it's my favorite passage many times. Timothy says to, uh, Paul says to Timothy, don't let anybody knock you down because you're young. And I cross that out in my Bible, and I say, don't let anybody knock you down because you're old, because they do do that. They ignore you, and they think you don't know what you're talking about. You just have to stand up and say, listen, I still got all my wits, hopefully. So, oh, I don't. You don't have all your wits. No. No. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> I think as we get older, we lose sight of the fact that each one of us, there's somebody out there that needs you. Yeah. And you should spend a little time trying to find them. There's somebody out there that needs you. Did we find at that time by doing a lot of what we're doing here too? Yeah. So that was a good segue into Barbara's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Barbara's going to read a poem for you, and the introduction for it is when an old lady died in a geriatric ward of a small hospital near Dundee, Scotland. It was felt she had nothing left of any value. Later, when the nurses were going through her meager possessions, they found this poem. Its quality and content so impressed the staff that copies were made and distributed to every nurse in the hospital. One nurse took her copy to Ireland. The old lady's sole bequest to posterity has since appeared in the Christmas edition of the news magazine of the Northern Ireland Association for Mental Health. A slide presentation has also been made based on her simple but eloquent poem and this little old Scottish lady with nothing left to give to the world is now the authoress of this <coughs> anonymous poem ringing across the internet. <clears throat> Goes to show that we all leave some footprints in time. <clears throat> what do you see, nurses? What do you see? What are you thinking about when you're looking at me? A crabby old woman, not very wise, uncertain of habit, with faraway eyes who dribbles her food and makes no reply when you say in a loud voice, oh, I do wish you'd try, who seems not to notice the things that you do and forever is losing a stocking or a shoe. 
who resisting or not lets you do as you will. The years and the love that I've known. I'm now an old woman and nature is cruel. Tis just to make old age look like a fool. The body, it crumbles. Grace and vigor depart. There is now a stone where I used to have a heart. But inside this old carcass, a young girl still dwells. And now and again, my battered heart swells. Oh, I remember the joys. I remember the pain. I'm loving and living life all over again. I think of the years, all too fast, gone too fast, and accept the stark fact that nothing can last. So open your eyes, nurses, open and see. Not a crabby old woman. Look closer. See me.